<laughs> All right, guys. Um, this was kind of just real quick. I just wanted to give you guys some alternatives to some of the more advanced testing techniques that are going to be talked about later tonight. Um, so I'm just going to cover testing basics, and I'm just going to touch on what I consider kind of five or thereabouts uh, tests that kind of every site should kind of at least be put through before, before it gets um, launched. Um, for those that don't know me, uh, I'm the owner and manager of CrossFunctional. Um, we're a Drupal development consulting and training company. Um, and that's about all I'm going to say about that. Um, so quick overview. Uh, just going to cover a few things tonight in terms of the basics of, of testing. Uh, and then I'm just going to try to do a demo of some of these things. I don't know how the Wi-Fi is going to act up on me tonight, so I apologize if there are problems with the demos. It's 10 minutes, okay? Ten cool. So um, you'll also notice this, that the slides were a bit uh, minimalistic this month, so I apologize. Um, just a quick touch on, on the process of just quality assurance in general, um, particularly because a lot of the people are going to be demonstrating more advanced testing techniques this month. I just want to point out the fact that quality assurance, the goal is really to actually try to improve um, the stability, the robustness, the quality of, the, of an actual site. Um, a lot of people also like to think of it as, as reducing bugs, but you're never ever going to have a process that's going to completely eliminate bugs. Um, and at the same point, it's really important to consider the fact that some quality assurance process is better than no quality assurance process. Um, so even some of the really basic techniques that I'm going to talk about tonight are, are better than nothing. So. Um, the, the particular part that I'm going to touch on as well is mostly manual testing. I'm going to use a few tools, but um, manual testing is really um, great for things like usability testing, um, any kind of functional testing. Um, and in a, a lot of regards, the manual testing is really, it's, it's the best, in terms of testing, it's the ultimate type of testing because it really gets to how your users are going to actually use your site and tries to actually kind of break things. Um, the biggest downside, obviously, though, with manual testing is that it's really hard to scale up. Um, it potentially can be really um, repetitive for people to actually try to repeat the test multiple times every time you're doing the development. And that's one of the things that, obviously, some of these more advanced tools try to eliminate. But at the end of the day, even if you've got the most advanced, sophisticated tools, automated tools, that kind of stuff, it's still really important for a person to actually go through your site and test it. Because um, that's that's ultimately the best way of actually guaranteeing what the experience is going to be like for your other users. So um, <clears throat> the big thing I'm going to touch on tonight is checklists. Um, checklists are obviously really easy to follow for the most part if they're done right. Um, the main part of checklists is to ensure that things are not missed. Even if you've actually got somebody that's an expert in doing quality assurance or doing testing, um, checklists ensure that things don't get missed, particularly if you're trying to repeat tests. It ensures that things can actually be repeated consistently. Um, but it really doesn't eliminate the need for expertise. Um, checklists are not a, a teaching tool or a learning tool. If you don't know how to do some of these things, um, that's not going to all of a sudden make you an expert, but it's going to at least hopefully give you the some indications of what you should be considering. So um, I'll, I'll also, I apologize, I meant to point out, um, there's actually a book called The Checklist Manifesto that's really good. Um, it's, uh, it's written by a um, really highly decorated uh, emergency room uh, surgeon. Um, and he, he actually kind of pioneered and showed how checklists in the emergency room can actually uh, greatly increase uh, or, or decrease the, the number of um, fatalities and that kind of stuff in the emergency room. Um, and he did that all based off of things like uh, checklists used in airline pilots and that kind of stuff. So um, the, one of the things that kind of came out of that book um, and that's actually really helpful is a checklist for how to create checklists. Um, so I won't go into too much detail here. This is freely available on the web. Um, but it's, it's really fun to kind of make sure that when you're actually creating your checklist that you understand the kind of key things that you want to look at. Um, some of the key things that you want to um, kind of check out is actually the validation of your checklist. So once you actually create them, you want to test them and actually make sure that things are, are gone through a couple of times. And always kind of keep refining your checklist just like you would your development process and your deployment process. You want to keep those things up to date. Um, so unless anybody's got questions on this, I'll keep moving because I know I don't have a lot of time. So uh, the five tests for every website, um, the, the things I'm going to kind of touch on today are the big ones, which are 
code quality. Um, often, most sites often need to be considerate of their SEO or search engine optimization. Uh, some accessibility checking, um, and uh, and part of that is also well, kind of related to the code quality more so is is mobile checking as well, which we'll touch on. Um, security, obviously, you don't particularly for anybody who's actually working on a, on a web application, you want to make sure that you can actually test the security of that application. Uh, performance is a big thing and also relates back to the SEO. If anybody's not familiar with the fact that um, Google and most of the other search engines are starting to penalize websites for, or I shouldn't say penalize, but they're um, giving uh, increased um, weight to websites that are very quick and, and speedy to respond to, so that's some things. And then I'm also going to touch on a few kind of Drupal specific things, um, most notably the Acquia Insight tool. So, <clears throat> uh, that's not very interesting. There we go. So, um, this, sorry, this is a template that we've put together. Um, I found that, um, that Google uh, Spreadsheets is actually a really ideal way to actually track um, checklists for ourselves. Um, the nice thing about it is that you can actually have a, a different checklist for each of the different kind of steps or, or pieces to your website. Um, and if you create it in a template, it makes it really easy to then actually uh, clone that for a particular site. So <clears throat> this is an example of one. We've obviously, the other nice thing about that is then once you actually kind of clone it or copy it, um, you can then um, modify that um, to be more specific to your particular project. So. The template gives you the basics, but there might be additional checks that you want to um, add to something, or there might be things that are just not applicable that you want to remove, um, and, uh, and you can kind of keep track of that stuff. Um, the way that I've laid that out is kind of grouping things by different categories, um, and then these kind of checklist notes, um, as well as links to any automated tools that we can use to help with that. And then I've got, I'm not sure if everybody can see that, but that's a color-coded um, field for tracking what's, what's done or not done. As well, as well as any individual comments about something. Um, and we, we use this for each project that we do um, and, and kind of confirm that um, we've got a little report here at the end that based off of the values of those, of those fields, I can calculate what hasn't been addressed yet or has been addressed yet. So you can see in this example, we've still got kind of eight outstanding items that either haven't been addressed yet or haven't passed the mark yet. Um, so, a little backstory: the site that I'm actually going to demo for you tonight is a site that um, I've has gone through multiple iterations and is uh, actually a site for my dad's company. Um, so it's a really tiny site. Um, I just wanted to give you guys an example of a really, really simple like brochure type site. Um, I excuse the graphic designs. You can you can blame uh, 1997 Ryan Cross for the horrible, horrible graphics um, and the fact that they're still here. Um, <clears throat> So um, just going back to, to my presentation, uh, I'm going to cover these kind of in order. Um, at any point, somebody can actually interrupt me, but um, I'm just going to show you a few things. I will interrupt you in three minutes. OK. Then we'll do this very, very quickly. So the, the easiest one, as I said, is, is, um, is code quality. Um, you want to be able to actually at least confirm that your site um, has valid HTML. Um, there's also tools that you can validate your CSS and other elements. Um, but you can see here, you can. This is a really easy um, W3 validator. Um, really, really basic. Um, not much really to say here. There's also tons of other little like um, browser plugins, whatever else that can help you with this. Um, you can see this particular when we ran this through here, um, it's passed with a small warning. Um, I won't going to go through that too much. Um, does everybody understand what I'm talking about when I talk about validating of the HTML? Any questions? Yeah? Okay. Um, <clears throat> the other is a, a, is a similar tool, but it's actually more specific to um, checking things against how they're going to perform in a mobile context. Um, so if we test that real quickly. take a little second to actually run through. Now keep in mind, these are one of the things that a lot of people will probably get confused on here. This does not test for browser compatibility. It's not like this is testing against iPhones or Androids or whatever else. This is basically just giving you hints about how this is going to perform in a, in a 
small device capacity. Um, so that's one of the things I haven't really covered tonight, but browser compatibility is definitely, or cross-browser compatibility is definitely something you should do, um, but it's not something that's, um, that's an easy little checklist like this to do. Um, so you can see this, this particular um, site um, doesn't have any critical or severe issues. Um, and you can kind of see what the issues are. The biggest one is that there's a couple of those images, that really ugly graphic that takes up um, quite a bit of space. And so it kind of um, broaches the 20 kilobytes recommended size. Um, there's some other attributes here around how the CSS is, is actually being used um, and that kind of stuff. And it's important, obviously, to keep in mind that um, one of, for example, if we go back to our checklist here um, and look at our launch, um, should be up here, code quality. Uh, we have a score here, where is it, of 75 or plus that we're trying to meet. So a lot of these things um, are actually really good to actually check most things, but just because, like, if you don't meet 100% of every single rule, um, you don't have to. It's just make sure that you're aware of why you're not meeting those rules. Um, so we actually check the, the score. Um, I think this actually ends up scoring a 76 or something like that. That's not ideal, but it, it passes, right? So the last one, uh, or there's a couple more here. Um, the other big thing to really check, um, particularly for commercial sites, um, and more so for things like government sites and university, large institutions, is accessibility. And accessibility is a whole other topic. We've had a couple points where we've gone uh, in previous presentations and touched on that. Um, and there are other tools about that to be aware of, but one of the most common ones to be aware of is the color contrast um, for people that have um, difficulty seeing. Um, it's, it's not uncommon actually even for, for example, like young men. I think men above 30 have like a one in five or one in four chance of being colorblind. So color contrast is actually a big deal even for a wide part of the, the, um, your audience usually. So, the nice thing is these things do take, I mean, they take a minute to run sometimes. Um, so it makes it a bit difficult in a short presentation like this. But this is obviously a lot easier than trying to run all these yourself. Um, so we should actually see some errors here, I think. Yeah, so we've got a couple of problems here um, that haven't quite been fixed up yet. Um, like I said, that's a really good check. And, you know, for example, if you look at only errors, you'll see, see those kind of things. Um, the other one, this is, this is a more advanced um, accessibility checker. It checks for more things. But again, these are just general guidelines and rules. Um, you kind of need to take this with a grain of salt and still actually do some manual checking of your accessibility. Um, I know this one's definitely going to cause an error. Yeah, there you go. So known problems, this one particularly calls out that there are some elements within the design that don't meet the contrast requirements for, for accessibility. Um, so you can see it kind of points out how it looks and where it is and, and that kind of stuff. Um, there are a couple instances of this, but in this case, they're all related to the, excuse me, the same problem. What is that? It's the A checker um, accessibility checker tool. I forget what it's called. Um, it's a checker.ca is the, is the URL here. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of other automated or semi-automated accessibility tools to look for on the web. Just, just do a Google search. You'll find several others. Um, it's also using color contrast information. I'm sorry? It's also using color contrast information. Yeah, so that's, that's actually exactly what this one's picked up is the, is the color contrast problem. So why would you use the other check colors? Like, is it better or? It's just different. Um, you know, some of these other tools you can actually use to um, check. Like, the other thing, too, with a lot of these automated tools is what what one might pick up, another one might not. So sometimes, if, particularly if you're going to run through these things as a checklist, it's really quick to just run through several of them at once. Um, I see Margie's getting ready to bump me on time, so I'm going to keep moving quickly. Uh, this is another um, website. This one's specifically around security. Um, this one takes a while to run, so I'm not going to run this. Um, but if anybody wants, it's really easy to just type in a URL, um, and it'll do some automated checks for, for security. Uh, but one that's probably, I mean, Drupal itself is kind of fairly secure out of the box, but there's a module here called the Security Review Module um, that I really recommend running for all, almost every site. Um, it's a bit Drupal-specific, obviously, 
but um, this is something that'll help you guys out. Um, and some of the new Acquia uh, network and insight tools, which I'll touch on briefly, um, are also based on some of these things as well. Um, so you'll need to download this module and run it through, but it'll catch a lot of the basic security things, um, as well as the coder module, which will help you guys actually uh, check the security and the code uh, quality within your Drupal custom Drupal modules. Uh, performance tools. Um, one of the most common ones is, is Google Page Speed. Um, where am I here? Uh, there it is. Um, <clears throat> you can download this as an extension. There's also another uh, one by Yahoo called Why Slow. Um, I actually like the Why Slow one better, but this one gives you a lot of details. Um, so this comes up. There we go. So while that's running, I'll go ahead and jump through. The next one is an SEO checker. Um, this one actually is, a, is, and there's a quite a few different SEO tools you can use. This one just happens to give you a particular score, and it's a plugin that you can actually use in Firefox. Um, I'm using Chrome tonight, so I'm not going to demonstrate this one, but it's a really good one to just um, check out a few basic things for on-page SEO context. So if we look at, it's still analyzing, so we'll jump ahead. And the last little piece, um, we'll go back to, this, to the speed one, but this is a really good tool uh, by Acquia called the Instant Insight um, thing. So the nice thing about this, you don't have to sign up to, to their subscription. I do recommend it because you'll get more details out of it. But as a very, very basic, huh? and, a free and a free t-shirt as well, which you'll touch on. Um, and so you'll notice for this particular one, I'll, I'll run this. Um, while we wait on that, hopefully page speed is still running. So um, the, the limitation to this tool though is that it, it only can kind of touch on things from an external perspective. Um, I definitely recommend uh, if there's a lot of additional checks that the Insight tool can run for you. Um, and for almost every site that we launch, we, we actually um, do this, set it up to be um, run through these tools. Um, you have to download a little uh, module if you're, if you're not using the Acquia um, distribution. Um, but it'll not only give you the basic stuff that you'll see here in a minute, but it'll also give you additional things on security. Um, it gives you additional tools also on performance and stuff like that as well. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm missing Wi-Fi here, but... Yeah, you can skip this one. Okay. So these are, I don't know, these are taking a little longer than they normally run, but both of these tools will come back with a generated score. Um, the page speed one um, does pretty well. I think we get like a 95 on this one for this particular site. And this site I was going to demonstrate for you, but it, it actually gives you the, the A score as well. So that's it. Um, if anybody has any questions, come see me later or run these tools yourself and um, let me know. Thank you very much, Thanks. Brian.